What are you, scared? It's good for you to try new things. Time to check out more of your latest requests and recommendations for underground metal albums on Bandcamp, and we're starting with Verge of Lunacy and Imperfection. Ooh, that's loud. Out of Russia, Metalcore Modern Metal Internet Project. Pretty solid. Good clean vocals, which that can be hit and miss on, on this particular program. Get some pretty questionable clean vocals here. <laughs> Guitar works solid. That very early to mid 2000s vibe. Kind of that as I lay dying kill switch era stuff. Yeah, sounds really good. This actually came out in April. Yeah, good mix of the harsh and clean vocals. Clean parts seem pretty catchy. Album art's kind of interesting. Ooh, good little groove here. This reminds me of The Haunted, this part. It's always refreshing to me, too, when I hear metalcore bands doing the clean vocals well, because I just feel like so many of them have gone to that kind of, like, butt rock and, like, really overly poppy style vocal that I'm just not a huge fan of. It's a fine line. It's a fine line. But some people listen to the stuff I listen to and be like, that's corny, but to each their own, I suppose. Yeah, this sounds really good. I think the only feedback I'd give, and again, this is just based on me kind of picking through, I like this heavy part here, picking through a few parts, I think just carving out your own personality now, because I think you've got everything else down. Like, production sounds great, guitar work is awesome, vocals sound great. It's just a matter of like, Playing with the songwriting and deciding, like, what makes Verge of Lunacy Verge of Lunacy and not, you know, any of 10,000 other modern metalcore groups. But yeah, I, I dig this. I could definitely, uh, might add it to my metalcore list. Ooh. Hitting some good notes there, too. But yeah, Verge of Lunacy, Imperfection. And we have Brain for the Masses with... Monocopsis out of Portugal. This is the only album on this list that is actually from 2022, but that is okay. Not one to scoff at things for just being a couple months too late. I like the synth on here. What do we have for genre tags here? Metal and Porto. Hmm. Trying to decide what even to call this. Kind of leaning more progressive metal, sort of. Sounds good. Great atmosphere. Again, with those kind of like simulated strings. Good riffs. Solid melodies. It's like a, a little bit of doom in there, but it's more so, I'd say, leaning into what feels like kind of a more progressive metal, with some groove metal too. Cool riff here. Sort of a mix of riffage there from like At The Gates with, again, like As They Lay Dying. Just based on sampling, I think the one thing I'm hearing here that I'd like to see expanded is the vocals. Yeah, this one's a bit more <coughs> straight metalcore. But yeah, the vocal... Similar issue I have with, like, Trivium, where it's the same kind of squelchy uh, scream the entire time. Like, there's no variation. I'd like to hear you... Try to play with your voice a little bit more. 
like this piano part. Not saying add clean vocals, just saying start with, can you throw in some deeper growls, some higher snarls, like just a little bit more dynamics in the vocals, I find goes a long way. Because that's the type of thing that honestly, no matter how good the rest of the album is, and I've had, like this happened with the, uh, that Isan Matt Heafy uh, collab last year, was it uh, Ibaraki or whatever? Musically, very cool, but I just could not get over how annoying <laughs> it was to just hear Matt's same scream over and over again. Yeah, not bad by any means, but I think everything else here sounds really good. The production could probably be even better. Um, oh, we got some cleans on here, too. The cleans sound good, but again, I'm not even suggesting that like you do more cleans, necessarily. It's more so about varying up the harsh vocals. But yeah, other than that, sounds really cool. Brain for the masses. Monocopsis. Alright, this is the only kind of sort of bigger release on this list, but I wasn't covering it anywhere else, and so I wanted to make sure I at least made mention of it. We have a new split with Abyssal and Elor Sith. Not familiar with El Elor Sith until I listened to this, but I'm a huge Abyssal fan. If you like that big cavernous death metal, you need to be listening to Abyssal if you're not familiar with them. Like, they're fucking awesome. Put them in a similar realm as stuff like Portal, where it's more kind of like atmospheric. They also do quite a bit of doom metal in their sound. But just like cavernous, insane sounding stuff. They're, they're just the best at what they do. This split wasn't enough for them to really make my like best of the month list, but it's still really good. And like I said, Abyssal's just awesome. Like, they're one of the best, most underrated underground death metal bands of, of the modern day, I would say. So, check them out. And then I was I was impressed with uh, Ellersith, too, which, which, like I said, I wasn't really familiar with them. But uh, a good counterpoint to that with some similarities. They're, they're a bit more kind of straightforward. A little bit less original, I would say, but good stuff. So yeah, if you just want some really cavernous, dreary, miserable fucking death metal, <laughs> then you need to check out Abyssal and the Elder Sith with Sepul Corporeal Amor. Right then we have Aaron Angmar with Atavism and Dying Stars. Promising start on this one already. So album art reminds me of a mix of uh, that God Forbid cover with um, uh, Spyros from Septic Flesh does a lot of album arts kind of in this style. So it's like <laughs> his take on that God Forbid cover is kind of the vibe I'm getting from that. It's an Italian project. I wouldn't honestly, I wouldn't even be surprised that they have roots in Greek atmosphere here. They're saying. Hey, look at that! Seth Syro. Sorry, I said Spyro. It's Syro. Seth Syro. I know my I know my artwork. He uh he did the artwork for this. He has a very distinct style. If you look at the Septic Flesh album covers, and he did a lot of uh, well-known album covers, especially from like the '90s and early 2000s. He did a Rotting Christ cover that's kind of sort of famous. And I'm getting some Rotting cross, cr Crossed Christ vibes from this part in particular. It's a very Rotting Christ sounding, very Greek black metal sounding vibe, which I like. I like that more kind of melodic Greek style, which nobody does quite like Rotting Christ, but these guys seem interesting. I spent the first, like, minute talking about <laughs> Seth. I'm just very pleased with myself that I recognize his style again. 
seems uh, worthy of this music too. I'm, I'm digging it again. I think production sounds really good. Sounds very grand, very large. Solid riffs that are creating atmosphere, but also have some kind of earworm melodies. Digging the vocals, very imposing. And I like how they're mixing in these kind of like chanted sounding sections with the harsh vocals. Definitely leaning blackened, but kind of blackened death metal overall. Yeah, blackened death metal in the tags. Yeah, it sounds really good. Another good batch so, so far. Yeah, it's very evil, imposing, menacing, all the adjectives. Yeah, another one here. This is very kind of rotting Christ. When they do their more kind of like ritualistic sounding stuff. Yeah, it sounds really good. Digging this project. Might have to check this out a bit more. That is Aaron Angmar, good name too, with Atavism and Dying Stars. All right, we have another single from Grievings that I wasn't able to fit on last month's list. So Lafayette, Louisiana Projects. Kind of a grimy, more raw take on hardcore metalcore. They just uh, played some shows with Capra, friends of the channel, and then uh, sent me a shirt that I've worn in at least a video at this point, I think. I will say, critique on the shirt, I wish that the skeleton design was on the front. Because <laughs> that's the coolest part. But as you can hear, like, even though their roots are in, <clears throat> like, hardcore and metalcore, they're pretty harsh. <laughs> you know, it's a lot more extreme. There's, like, some very deathy vocals in here. Some kind of grimier, sludgier elements. That's, like, a more black metal almost register for that part. Darker vocal uh, lyrics, too. Like this uh, mix of this groovy driving guitar with the pounding toms. Yeah, I think these guys have got something. I'll be interested to see them come up. And I really like their aesthetic. I like their logo too. And again, I love the CKY shirt. <laughs> yeah, just giving you a little taste there. We've only got one song. I previously covered The Endless, too, in another episode, so you can check that out. But yeah, send some love to Grievings, because I have a feeling we're going to be seeing more from them in the future. And thanks again for the shirt. All right, we have an Access of Perdition with Chained in the Damnation Asylum out of Newcastle. This is another, this is another just single at this point. Another kind of blackened sounding track here. A little more technical. Also industrial mode. Lots of different tags here. Kind of interesting logo too. It's a different kind of shape. Those vocals are nasty. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of like if you take the like swirling and sorceling sort of emperor immortal sounding guitars, but then throw some like super brutal gurgly death vocals on it. It's an interesting mismatch. Good atmosphere. I normally don't love those vocals this one's more like kind of half spoken word like very black metal vocals in this part too yeah I like how kind of weird it is it's different 
Yeah, pretty, pretty unique. I feel like the name and access of perdition sounds familiar too. I wonder if I've covered this stuff previously. I like this kind of industrial backing part there too. Yeah, this sounds interesting. I'd, I'd definitely be curious to hear more. So if you drop a new album, keep in touch. But yeah, I, I like it. I don't know if I have any feedback for it either. That was that was unique. That is an axis of perdition with Chained in the Damnation Asylum. Then we have the return of Kikol with Deeper Underground. Say Jakarta, Indonesia project. Covered a few times here. Always a little weird and experimental. My time of recording this, we only have three tracks, but by the time this episode goes up, this should be fully released. I, already on this song, I can hear a stepping up of the kind of progression in songwriting here. Another cool album cover, too. We previously covered Quantum Resolution, and I believe possibly another album, too. We might have done envisaged to I feel like the vocals are a little bit improved too a little more kind of a straight black metal but still keeping the kind of like weird elements that synth uh, I've, I've said this I think before but I'd compare them on some level to some of size stuff especially um, Kind of the imaginary Sonoscapes era stuff. How they mix the kind of electronic and sort of 70s prog elements. It's always interesting. Very unique, interesting stuff. I'd be interested to hear this whole thing. Which I think I have the download. I've just been too lazy to download it. <laughs> And man, just like last month, the May release schedule has been insane. So it's like so hard to decide what makes it on the best of the month list. But I always recommend this project. Like it's, it's just very different. I'm all about difference. You want something totally unique and strange. That doesn't sound like anything else you're listening to. Like, look at that. <laughs> it's one of those bands too, you skip around and... The next couple seconds will be completely different from the last. I like these female vocals, again, kind of reminded me of Psy. And I really do think this is a big improvement, just based on what I'm hearing here, from the previous albums. Because even though I liked the experimentation of those, there were some areas I felt like could be tightened up. And I'm hearing all that tightened up here. So again, I'll have to listen to it all the way through. But this sounds very up my alley and interesting. Okay, I think these clean vocals are where I still have some of the criticism. And I don't know if it's the specific effect that's on them, or if it's the delivery itself, but it turns me away a little bit. I think part of it is the delivery. I think some of these notes aren't getting hit 100%. So again, I, I, I just me giving constructive criticism. Everything else I'm absolutely loving here. Especially these like weird synth moments and the little kind of breakbeat stuff. All that is cool. It, it could compare it to something like Igor too in that way. But yeah, that is Kiko with Deeper Underground. And we have Petral with Salvation Precipitates out of Croatia. I really love doing this because, like, you just find stuff from, like, every country. And, like, every little obscure corner of the world sometimes gets overlooked. It sounds interesting, too. Kind of getting a... Uh, Sort of like 80s proto-black metal elements in here. Raw black metal. I 
There's even a touch of stuff like Venom in here. It's got that very old school kind of mentality. Oh, I have, okay, I thought that name sounded familiar. We covered uh, VRH previously, I'm fairly certain. It's so hard to keep track of what I've covered. I've even accidentally covered the same album more than once <laughs> because there's just so much. There's, there's too much. It's hard to keep up. I dig this. This is, again, another good example of going for that more raw production, but not losing anything in the process. Like, the guitars, drums, vocals, everything's still coming through. You can understand what's going on. It's not turning into a muddled, buzzing mess. Solid atmosphere. I like how kind of deranged everything sounds, too. Everything just sounds like a little bit off. Like, the vocals are a little unhinged. The guitars sound, like, almost slightly out of tune in, in a good way. But then there's these, like, catchier parts to kind of, like, hold it all together. It's like, it's like somebody trying to, like, hold on to their sanity, but then spiraling. Yeah, I dig this. This is... Pretty, oh, we got some, like, little jazzy detour here with some bass. And then back into it. Yeah, a little, little avant-garde elements there, too. Yeah, so much cool stuff. This might be another one I might flag for some coverage later on in the year for some lists that I'm cooking up. We'll have to see. But yeah, that is Petrol with Salvation Precipitates. Then we have SOIF with Violent Drinking Demo. Gotta love that. <laughs> Definitely not American, but I don't see the... Uh, the country listed up here. Crossover Thrash. Uh, oh, come on. Where are y'all from? Stupid old immature freaks. Oh, it's from Quebec. Okay. The heavy accent threw me off a little bit. Yeah, just some fun, classic style crossover. stuff in the vein of uh, DRI, which I wonder if the the acronym name is even kind of a nod to that. Oh, and that's that's what it stands for, too. Stupid old immature freaks. Love it. Just like dirty, rotten imbeciles. Uh, there's clearly a crossover there. No pun intended. Yeah, this is fun. I mean, what can I say? Like, it's hard to give feedback to something like this, because it's definitely hitting exactly what's going for. This is definitely the type of music where if I'm in some hole-in-the-wall bar getting drunk, this is the band I want to play. <laughs> Violent Drinking Demo seems like the perfect album title, too. Ooh. Solid riff there, too. Reminds me of something, but I'm not entirely sure. There's like a little bit of Motorhead in there, maybe. Solid energy. And like, that's what you want for crossover. I hate when crossover bands like slow it down, because honestly, to me, that completely defeats the purpose. Like, thrash and hardcore are some of the fastest, hardest genres and if you like slap them together and then you slow it down it's like what the fuck are you doing <laughs> like just go fast just go hard that's what we're here for yeah that is soif with violent drinking demo we have mutilated currency division a lovely cover here out of ohio is this our first u.s band today losing track Cyborg Industrial Metal. Okay, been looking for some industrial. Y'all, this this year, 2023, has been bone fucking dry for industrial metal. I'm telling you. And, and industrial in general. Like, I've come across things here and there, but it's all like borderline. And frankly, a lot of it's just really meh. So, it sucks that we're almost halfway through the year. There's been like nothing. 
and uh, moldering cacophonous disintegration is their three word description here which I like. This doesn't quite break the trend for me in terms of like what I'm looking for in industrial because this is obviously on the more kind of like weird experimental side which I also like but I, I just I need some like three teeth I need some I mean, it's especially considering Skinny Puppy are on their final tour. And they came here, and I'm kind of sad I didn't go. The tickets sold out. I really should have. So one of my favorite bands. But in a year where they're hanging it up, we could just really use something. So this does remind me of the more, like, weird stuff on, like, Last Rites or some of the Brap albums. Good kind of, like, thinking, working music, usually... So I'm not being critical of this, actually. For what it is, like, I, I like this. I just, I, I want some just pure head-bobbing industrial. Last year I had some jams, but still, it was hard to even scrape together, like, a top ten list for the entire year. Underrated genre. But yeah, this is more something I would put on, like, while I'm doing my documentation. Good kind of, like... It's got that driving beat to kind of like keep you pumped, keep you motivated, but the weirdness sort of like diffuses into the background. Overall cool aesthetic. Good beat on this one too. Yeah, we are definitely for the weirdos out there. So my weirdos, check out <laughs> Mutilated Currency Division, Stages of Decay. Then we have All Hallows Eve with Coven. Very classic titling here. Out of uh, Groton, Conn Groton, Connecticut. It's another US group. Getting uh, kind of like, okay, that opening gave me like tribulation vibes, but now we've got clean vocals. Is this going to be like a typo kind of situation, or what are we going for here? Embodies the synthesis of medication and man. Oh, I like those backup vocals. Those kind of ghost, ghost-like, too. Oh, Coven. They want the long O. Atmospheric metal, gothic heavy metal. It's a vibe. I think the production guitar tone could be cleaned up a bit, but I like this sort of like classic heavy metal vibe to the riffs. I think the overall songwriting is pretty solid. I just think you know, the production could be up to bit. Yeah, this is definitely something I could see opening for like ghosts. Or tribulation. Maybe also like just a hint of reverb on the vocals or something. I'm just I'm thinking of how I could tweak the mix just slightly to make what already song-wise sounds good into something that is even more impressive on recording. There's a very, like, 70s vibe to this, and I'm thinking of, like, how could you also bring some of those old 70s recording touches to this? But again, I like the, the performance itself, and the songwriting seems pretty solid. It's another one, too, where uh, at the time of recording, there's only three songs, but by the time this goes up, it'll all be out. And that's what this is all about, is just giving you a taste so that you go check out some of these bands yourselves, give them some of your hard-earned money. I like these layered vocals. I, there's a lot here I think I could enjoy. I just think, toy with the mix a little bit. Get some feedback on like how you could do this. Also, again, listen to some of the latest stuff from Ghost and Tribulation, see what they're doing with their mix. How might you apply some of that stuff here? But yeah, that is All Hallows Eve with COVID. Then we have Air to Madness with Night Flyers. Out of Texas. The trifecta of US states here. <laughs> Melodic metal, progressive rock. 
Very proggy cover, is what I would have guessed. Uh, music sounds good so far. First things first with your Bandcamp page. Black background, please. And I would m match your color scheme. Uh, black background and this like kind of neon green for the lettering would be cool. Just, just a little touch that makes visiting your page more pleasing. The harsh white is always just so painful. Liking the performances here, similar feedback to that last band though. Except going for a little bit more modern. Uh, I, I'd be listening to stuff like Animals as Leaders and what they're doing with their production. In your case. Yeah, I think the mix could be improved slightly. But so far I'm liking what I'm hearing musically. Yeah, this guitar tone too. It's too, like, tin can for this part. And it doesn't really gel with, like, the more... The, the, the backing guitar you've got here with the more clean tone. Those, those did not gel. Like... Yeah, it just doesn't... that doesn't work. Like, the guitar of itself sounds cool, but... Choice of distortion needs a little work. I like the layered vocals again. Very pretty. Performance-wise, again, like... Lots of good stuff I'm hearing here. Ooh, I like this riff, too. Very proggy riff. That's fun. A little, little dream theater in there, too. But again, that, that guitar tone just doesn't sound very good. Cool bass on this one. Maybe a little, again, something on the vocals to flesh it out a little bit more. But yeah, it seems like the songs themselves sound good. I don't really necessarily have criticism about anything here in terms of the playing. Just uh, toy with the mix a little bit, but that sounds very promising. So again, that is Air to Madness with Night Flyers. All right, then we have Evil Brain Taste with number two out of Reading UK. Definitely caught my eye with this cover. <laughs> okay, I was expecting more death metal with that cover, but it's definitely more kind of black metal side. Black and death metal. They do describe themselves as somewhat of a comedy group. Black humor. like just a duo. Music's not bad. Production's a little bit rough, but if they're going for a more kind of comedic angle, I could see that kind of potentially playing into it. They've got the drum machine, which is always interesting. Reminds me of Vader with Litany. It's got that same kind of tone to it. A little grindy. There's death metal in there too. Oh, that's fun, fun kind of grindy, punky riff there. Yeah, not bad. I, I'm not sure exactly what kind of feedback you're looking for because again, it sort of depends on what you're going for. But the the songs themselves seem fun. Like I like the riffs. I, I might play with the production a little bit more, clean it up just a bit. But these riffs are they're really catchy. I mean, it's kind of that uh, Cannabis Corpse deal where, like, yeah, it's kind of a joke band, but it's like, the music's still good. Yeah, 
Yeah, I dig it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> it seems pretty enjoyable to me. So yeah, that is Evil Brain Taste with number two. All right, then we have Entrenchment with Silence After Us from Moscow, Russia. Hope y'all are staying safe out there. Not sure what part of Russia you're in. Well, <laughs> I just said it, Moscow. Duh. Okay, bolt thrower vibes already. Which, not gonna lie, a little, little bit in poor taste right now considering everything that's going on. But, I mean, arguably not though. It depends on what your real angle is. But it is going to be a hard sell for some people to be a Russian band with a fucking tank on your album cover. <laughs> Music sounds good though. Very, very strong bolt thrower vibes. Old school anti-globalistic death metal. I guess that's possible. Yeah, you captured everything. Like, even the production feels old school, which can be hard to actually pull up. There's so many old school death metal bands, but they all have modern production. Not all of them, but a lot of them do. Um, it's kind of hard to truly capture this sound, but I think you nailed it. If somebody handed this to me and was like, hey, this is like a lost bolt thrower album, I'd believe them. Depending on who gave it to me. <laughs> but yeah, this sounds really strong. Good riffs, vocals are strong, got some little hooks in there. Yeah, I think you fucking nailed it. Like, I, I don't know what to tell you, you, you did it. <laughs> you done did it. In fact, I'm gonna add this potentially, I think, to my like death metal list for end of year stuff to kind of revisit. But yeah, this sounds awesome. That is, again, Entrenchment with Silence After Us. All right, next up we have Panzerkrieg666 with Wolfpack. More gnarly black metal here, it sounds like. Classic upside down crosses in the album arts and the logo. Very aggro black metal appropriate to the name. I <laughs> think this like school hallway looking picture. German background in German underground extreme. So some bio. Yeah, looks like they're out of Germany. Seemingly. Kind of black and death metal. Ooh. Okay, that's fun. I'm always a sucker for those, like, start-stop riffs with the continuous blast beats or double bass. Production's okay. Cymbals sound a little compressed. Maybe it's just here on Bandcamp. You don't want to lose too much edge off of it, but... Snare sounds pretty good. I think it's mostly the cymbals. And the guitars could maybe sound a little bit fuller. But I'm liking the riffs, I'm liking the vocals. Very just evil and... miserable sounding. Oh yeah, some D-beats going there. Yeah, sounds really fun. Fun for me. <laughs> this is my idea of fun. Yeah, I don't know what else to say. It's kind of in that sort of Gorgoroth kind of camp a little bit. Pretty, you know, typical stuff I've heard before, so you could kind of expand from there, but... Yeah, dig it. Sounds pretty good. Panzerkrieg666 with Wolfpack. Here we have Wounded Not Dead, The Alchemist, 
Another UK band. Space Death Fusioners hailing from London. It is interesting that you did put Space Death Fusion on here, but also the Alchemist. That confused some people. That's alright. Seems like some pretty raunchy but proggy death metal. So far, musically, sounds pretty decent. I think the production, especially for something that's a little bit more progressive, I tend to prefer we go <coughs> a little bit more modern with the production. <laughs> so it feels a little bit demo-y, which, you know, to be fair, you're still early on in your recording career, relatively speaking, it seems like. Yeah, the music's, the music's cool, though. It kind of reminds me of, um... Not necessarily the vocals, but the guitar work is actually reminding me of one of the heavier, proggier 80s thrash metal groups. The name is on the tip of my tongue, but it's escaping me. Sadus. There's a little bit of Sadus in there. But even they kind of like tighten up their production a bit more. Yeah, I think performance-wise, but yeah, like the guitar tone here is just so, like, drowned out. Everything feels like it's, like, in the back of the mix. And there's kind of an inconsistency I'm hearing between tracks, too. Like, my guess would be these were not recorded in mix. Yeah, like, this one sounds a lot different than the last track. And I know that's part of the struggle, too, when you're a small band, is recording time and space and all that stuff, and things may be set up different, somebody else is handling, mixing, what have you, I don't know. I don't know what your process is. But yeah, I think that's my main feedback, is music sounds really good, production is not doing it justice, I would say. But yeah, this sounds very promising to me. Like, I could, I could see you, you know, hopping on something like the Artisan Era or something like that. With this quality. So yeah, that is Wounded Not Dead with The Alchemist. Then we have Puritan Opiate with Winter Crisis, the EP. Pseudonym of a Massachusetts English professor. <laughs> That's cool. Who makes atmospheric black metal and ambient recordings. That's kind of a fun backstory. I actually know somebody else kind of like that. He works at a school with like high school kids, but in his spare time makes fucking gnarly grindcore and was doing a YouTube channel for a while. Sounds pretty chill and spooky. Got an ambient and the more like overtly atmospheric black metal stuff, not exactly my thing. But I know plenty of people where it is. Free download too, can't go wrong with that. I like this beat here. I think the production could be a little bit more. <laughs> I don't know what word to use for it. Like, again, for something like this, I get you want it to be a little bit more raw, a little bit more kind of uh, almost like impromptu sounding or whatever you want to call it, but. I think you could play with it just a bit more. But I like the vibe. Like, it seems like you're getting the vibe that you seem to be going for. I love that you're an English professor, though. That's fun. <laughs> Just picturing you like all proper in class talking about like Dickens or something and then you go home and you <laughs> and 
put on the corpse paint and get all moody. Yeah, it seems like a pretty broad array of dynamics here, too. But yeah, for you atmospheric black metal lovers, that is Puritan Opiates with the Winter Crisis EP. Then we have Cathon with Aramites. Cool cover here. That art style looks very familiar. I'm sure I've probably seen this artist before. It's a Greek band out of Athens. Death Black Metal Ensemble. Who did the art? Covered by Chaos Dictator Design. I think I've heard of them before. Definitely got that Greek atmosphere which I'm such a fan of, as I've mentioned before. It's so interesting to me that for whatever reason, Greece just went in this much more kind of melodic direction from the start. With stuff like Rotting Christ, when compared to how kind of bleak and stripped back most of the Norwegian stuff was. And then of course, Sweden went a little bit more melodic too, but kind of in a different way. Be curious to kind of hear a breakdown of why that was. Did it just come down to the individual artists and what they were listening to at the time? What they grew up with? There's some really cool, subtle kind of synth atmosphere on this, too. I don't know if you'll be able to hear it in this recording, but again, all the more reason to go check it out yourself. This has some similar energy to... Uh, what was it? Uh, Krieg 666. Alright, we just listened to him, I already forgot the name. But, more melodic, less aggro. Cool logo. I'm always a sucker for that kind of like left hand path sounding production job too, where it's just that big echoey cavernous. A little guitar break here. I'm always curious for how it transitions back. <clears throat> okay, going for the kind of like doomy transition there. Yeah, another one, I, I don't think I have any feedback for you. This sounds really, really cool. And if it were any other month, honestly, like, this is stuff that probably could end up on, like, an end of month, best of the month list. But I already had to just, like, pull the band-aid off and finish it. <laughs> At the time of recording, it is long done. Because there's just too much. Even even moving from 10 albums to 15, it's just been a lot. Yeah, that sounds really cool. So a kind of doomier track here. We got little interludes add into the atmosphere. Yeah, this sounds really cool. I could definitely get down with this. So thank you for uh, sending me the download code for it. But again, that is Kathan with Aramites. Then we, oh Jesus. <laughs> oh my God. We have Kujeo Jabeno Jujun Anomias Kushija. That is the only time I'm gonna attempt it. And that's gonna be that. So we got a collected works here. Paint is uh, Rubeus Obex. So, interesting, but there's 23 tracks here. Sounds kind of cool so far, actually. Flame Through Prism Curated by Isaac on the Altar and EGT. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Nightmare, but we got some electronic elements in here too. This is very kind of Igor. A little, a little, like, mixing, like, gents with 
more of a brutal death metal kind of style. It's interesting. So many interesting things. I feel like I might have cov covered this album, but our Entei That cover looks familiar. My face might have been covering that. This one. Yeah, a little, little bit in line with like Nightmare, Blindfolded and Led to the Woods. A little bit more on the avant-garde side. The esoteric in the tags, which is always interesting. I'm all about the weird, wild stuff. We got a little kind of jazzy break here with the gents. I like how they managed to keep it more brutal. All these little like face changes and little breaks are cool too. Yeah, this sounds super intriguing as well. Uh, this so uh, May has been insane. Yeah. It looks like June and July, maybe a little bit more chill. So maybe I can fit a little bit more of this stuff into my end of month list than that month. We'll have to see. Yeah, very weird. The only thing that's that's tricky is like with this being a collected works. Like, it's a lot. Like, 23 tracks, that, that's a lot to digest. Some people love that. I like things to be a little bit more focused, so when you say collected works, like, is this, like, from these other albums here, too, or...? I'll have to check the email, maybe it was explained more fully, but it sounds really cool, so yeah, that is... Whatever the... I'm just gonna say this thing. Rubeus Obex <laughs> with collected works. All right, we have the return of an ancient legend long forgotten, previously covered. And this is Myth, solo project from this fellow right here. Independent solo studio project, loosely based on symphonic metal and rock. We covered, it's not on this page here. This is our singles, I think. I like this, like, simulated flute. It's kind of got an interesting quality to it. If I recall from um, the last time, it's almost like soundtrack music um, from this guy. Jeffrey Lewis does it all, except for vocals. We're from Megpoid Gumi. Yeah, kind of like epic fantasy music. Seems like good, uh, good stuff to put on during your D&D &D session. <laughs> but a little less campy. Like, he, he goes for the more kind of, like, epic, grandiose sound as opposed to kind of campy, silly goblin music. I really like those, like, twinkly synths. I do think the, the production could make it a little bit more grand, still. I might just need to turn it up a little bit. I think you're mostly there in that respect, but I just feel like it's still like a little bit more two-dimensional when it could be a little bit more kind of surrounding me. We got the folky medieval sounding guitar. I'm curious where the vocals come into play, since it mentions vocals. Cool little hook there, too. Yeah, just really awesome atmosphere, good piano work. I'm assuming that's probably maybe your main background? I don't know. I guess I, I'm making an assumption there. That's definitely my favorite part. Like, the riffs are kind of more just like set dressing to make it a little heavier. <laughs> As the solo comes in to prove me wrong. 
I like how you're mixing in this, like, more classical acoustic guitar, too. There was a baby. Yeah, really beautiful. I feel like this is an improvement from the last one, too, from what I remember. So, really, really cool stuff. Thank you again for the download code. And y'all check out an ancient legend long forgotten with myth. Then we have Soul Vapor with Soulscape. Spiritual metal music for the soul. Cool cover. Got that bisexual YouTube lighting. <laughs> what you going for? That, that's a very popular color scheme right now. It's just like pink and blue. Like this kind of Cthulhu monster. Got some features on here. I don't necessarily remember or recognize these names off the top of my head. So that's cool though. It's like they're kind of more, it's heavy, but it's sort of chill at the same time. Then going for that more kind of genty metalcore deathcore sounds. Those clean vocals there kind of reminded me of Cities Burn. If anyone remembers them. I think they're still around. Boy, that would be an album I should revisit from a long time ago. I can't remember the name of it, but the pic the cover had like a house and then like the roots coming down, like into the earth from under the house. It was a very like emotional album. Anyways. And it wasn't genty like this. We got some fun synth too. A little bit of like Born of Osiris in there. Maybe a touch of Veil of Maya. But they're kind of doing their own thing. These like clean vocals are a little bit different too. It's kind of like if Periphery took a bunch of like ayahuasca <laughs> and recorded an album. Yeah, sounds pretty interesting. Again, thank you for the download code, but I think these last few ones were all download codes sent from the bands. So always appreciate that. Cool guitar work there, too. Very different performance, but the vibe also reminds me a little bit of, like, Viljarta. I feel like I never say that band's name right. Like this is this is more if, if you mix like the meditative kind of chill vibe of Viljarta with the more kind of like upbeat elements of something like Born of Osiris. That's kind of what I'm getting from this. At least in the moment. That sounds pretty in a heavy kind of way. I, I think the drums could sound better. Like, that kick drum is so simulated, like... And I think it kind of takes away from... Even though everything's a little bit electronic sounding, that kick drum just, like, is distracting to me. It's just very kind of, like, fake and cheap sounding in comparison to the more kind of, like, uh, pretty kind of silky sound that you're going for, so... That's the, the one immediate piece of feedback I have. But this is cool. Like, this is doing something that I say a lot, that a lot of bands on the segment don't do. Is like, how do you justify existing in this bloated world of this genre? You're doing something different. It sounds different. So yeah, check out Soul Vapor with Soulscape. All right, we have the return of Morcara as well with Aggravations. Previously covered Entangled Excavations, which I believe I also included on my Best Black Metal Albums of 2022 list, if I'm not mistaken. And I love that album art, love this one. This one's not as understated, <laughs> it's a little bit more in your face, but I like the style. 
Reminds me of the the mouth of Sauron. Very raw, very dark. Um, the vocal style reminds me a little bit of uh, like early mayhem, where it's kind of chaotic. Almost like improvisational style of vocals. I, I do feel like there's a slight mismatch of like how clean the album art is with how raw the production is, if that makes sense. Like I look at that album art and I feel like it sets an expectation for something a slightly more modern sounding. Like not too much. By the way, this drum is awesome. But that's something I might toy with is I feel like Making the production just a little bit sleeker, just a little bit, would work well for the sound of going for. Because I think part of the issue too is it doesn't just sound raw, it sounds compressed. Now in the comments if you feel differently, let me know. But it, it feels like it's being squeezed and there's like a lot of cool potential atmosphere I hear kind of getting lost in translation as a result. And I could see getting overlooked. I can't remember if the production on Entangled Excavation sounded exactly the same as this one. I kind of want to contrast that one. You know what? Fuck it, I'm going to. Like I like again the, the music of this. Yeah, see, like, no, I guess that it ha it has some similar issues. And again, maybe it's just the Bandcamp version. But I do feel like this one sounds less compressed. Like this one, I don't know. It's, it's yeah, it's it sounds like slightly fuller. Maybe it's just in my in my head. I don't know. But like, I like. <coughs> Maybe I'm just crazy. I don't know. I don't know. Something's off with the production. I think the production could do a better job of capturing the music. I guess is the best way I could possibly put it. So keep toying with that. This one also just feels a little bit like gnarlier. Like a little bit more kind of like... Devil May Care. It's probably a good expression for it. I really like the drumming. It's kind of been the element that keeps jumping out at me. But yeah, cool. As always, got more Kara with aggravations. And then we also have the return of Igor Lapo for some awesome progressive music out of St. Petersburg, Russia. Another cool, very progressive, kind of like classic, sort of reminds me of like a Yes album cover or certain Rush album covers. That 70s prog, classic prog cover. Very cool. We've covered, I want to say at least three albums from them, maybe more. Or from him, I should say, because this is a, another solo project. And always impressive guitar work especially just instrumentation and in, in general <clears throat> the only element I'm not in love with is the vocals and it's not because the vocals are not good like great voice if you love like classic style prog more like dream theater where it's mostly clean vocals you're gonna love it like in fact I think he has, in many ways, a better voice than, um... God, why do I always blank when I record the segments? The dude from Dream Theater. His voice kind of gets on my nerves sometimes. I don't have that issue with this. It's just... I like prog with some harsh vocals. That's just my personal preference. But those synths, the guitars, the production... This is what I'm talking about, too, when I talk about that full production. If you put this on 
even through Bandcamp with some headphones on. They don't even have to be great headphones. This shit just, like, engulfs you. Like... Engulf sounds more like a death metal album. I guess it, uh... I mean, it surrounds you. It, it's, uh... It just, like, wraps you up in its... In its, uh, melodies and everything. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Yo, yeah, go listen to it. So the whole point of this segment is... Sample this stuff out to you. Oh, we got more kind of, like... 80s synth pop intro here. Well, this is kind of cool. Yeah, this feels more like a Depeche Mode kind of vibe on this one. Love the synths on this too. Really good. Yeah, one of one of my favorites. Uh, returning solo projects that keeps popping up. Always glad to hear from. Igor Lapo, because he makes great music, and you should check it out. So yeah, that is Igor Lapo with Abandoned Corners. All right, y'all, that's plenty for this insanely packed month of May, but uh, if you're new, be sure to subscribe to the channel. I do this every month, and then I do all sorts of other stuff. I put out videos at least twice a week. Also, if you really want to support me on Patreon, I will link that down in a pinned comment or in the description you can support me there um, this segment is always the lowest performance segment but i enjoy doing it because uh, this channel is all about really promoting those lesser known acts out there and just the celebration of music but that'll do it for now flight of icarus signing off i will see you in the trenches